Hello and welcome to Matt's Reloading Bench. So, the last time that I had the 6.5 Creedmoor out, I did 100 yard five shot groups, and the groups were very, very good and very similar to one another. So one issue that I had is I could not definitively pick one group over the other as far as what I was going to work with. So I reloaded the whole gamut and went back to the range and shot it all over again at 500 yards to see what kind of groups I could get there. And that was very telling. In this video, I'll be using my Ruger Precision Rifle, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. It is completely stock. There has been no modifications made to the rifle since I bought it. For the scope, I'll be using an Arkin Optics EP5 in 5 to 25 by 56. This five shot group is with 42.6 grains of powder. With 42.6 grains of powder, I had a group size of 4.63 inches, which equates to 0.88 MOA and a mean radius of 0.32 MOA. My average muzzle velocity was 26.22, with an extreme spread of 15.32 and a standard deviation of 6.60. This five shot group is with 42.7 grains of powder. At 42.7 grains of powder, I had a group size of 0.93 MOA with a mean radius of 0.32 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 2,632 feet per second with an extreme spread of only 5.94 and a standard deviation of only 2.61. This five shot group is with 42.8 grains of powder. At 42.8 grains of powder, I had a group size of 0.67 MOA with a mean radius of only 0.23 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 26.34 with an extreme spread of 11.87 and a standard deviation of 4.89. This five shot group is with 42.9 grains of powder. At 42.9 grains of powder, I had a group size of 0.6 MOA with a mean radius of 0.2 MOA. The average muzzle velocity is 2633 with an extreme spread of 17.61 and a standard deviation of 8.21. This five shot group is with 43.0 grains of powder. At 43.0 grains of powder, I had a group size of 0.73 MOA with a mean radius of 0.24 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 2637 with an extreme spread of 13.48 and a standard deviation of 5.47. So now that I figured out what powder charge I'm going to go with, which is going to be the 42.9 grains of Vitavori N160, my next step is testing different seating depths. Um, unfortunately, I, I forgot my cameras when I did that part of the shoot, but I do have all the statistical data. I've got the targets and I've got the chronograph data. So here is what I put together for that. At 15 thousandths off of the lands, I had a group size of 0.6 MOA with a mean radius of 0.28 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 2648 
the extreme spread was 14.47 and standard deviation 5.28. At 17 thousandths off of the lands, I had a group size of 0.78 MOA with a mean radius of 0.28 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 2636 with an extreme spread of 25.17 and a standard deviation of 11.61. At 19 thousandths off of the lands, I had a group size of 0.68 MOA with a mean radius of 0.2 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 2642 with an extreme spread of 21.14 and a standard deviation of 8.65. At 21 thousandths off of the lands, I had a group size of only 0.39 MOA and a mean radius of just 0.14 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 26.39 with an extreme spread of 8.62 and a standard deviation of 3.52. At 23 thousandths off of the lands, I had a group size of 0.56 MOA with a mean radius of 0.23 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 26.32 with an extreme spread of 32.42 and a standard deviation of 12.26. At 25 thousandths off of the lands, it started to really open up again. Uh, the group size was 0.83 MOA with a mean radius of 0.29 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 26.32 with an extreme spread of 8.01 and a standard deviation of 3.18. So after going over all of the data between uh, trying to find the right powder charge and trying to find what the best seeding depth would be, um, I'm going to be going with 42.9 grains of the Vitivori N160 and I'll be seeding the bullet at 21 thousandths off of the lens. Um, I'm very comfortable with that load. I've got uh, similar size groupings on both sides of it. And with the powder charge, I've got very similar uh, statistical data between the group sizes and the information off of my lab radar that would have me comfortable in kind of a little flat spot there as well. Um, the reason that I'm looking for something with these flats or similar nodes is because that way it gives me room for error. Um, you know, granted, when I'm loading up my my rounds, I try and be as precise from each to the next to the next to the next as I possibly can. Um, I check everything every step of the way, but this reduces flaws from inconsistencies. If you have any questions about this video, please let me know in the comments section down below. Also, if you like this video, let me know. Give me that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that way you can be informed of when my next videos come out. And until next time, shoot straight and be safe.